What up, y'all? I know not everyone feels like listening to a 40 plus minute poll plans video for the month, so I broke it up to abbreviate my thoughts in a more easily digestible way. I know half of y'all, though, ain't subscribed, so go ahead and do that. Like the video, leave a comment with what you think about the upcoming content and your plans as well. And if you want to see the whole video, I'll be providing a link to that as well. Check that out for sure. Thanks a million, and now let's get into what you're really here for, alright? X Death starting off the next cycle and pre Lufania Plus with the Void. He gets a rework now as Skill 1 now gains more Brave and shaves more Brave. Skill 1 also splashes more based on the amount of debuff stacks on the enemies, and it's functionally going to be a 3 the entire battle, so Skill 1 is now functionally a 80% splash attack. His Skill 2 now HP attacks twice, and the debuff got improved with more attack, def, and speed down, and it also increases the amount of HP poison. His LD boards gave him more attack. His brave gain on LD is bigger and it can overflow harder. And the HP damage dealt from the debuff now is increased as well. So now all of his off turn damage got increased alongside his on turn damage. His high armor is very unique in that at 0 4, like he leans completely into HP damage because he does no brave damage. It's actually pretty funny and it's obviously very beneficial for him. Although it's mainly impacting his on turn damage and it won't affect his off turn damage, I believe. Although I'm not sure of the scaling with his attack, so don't quote me on that. His LD calls are there to just apply his HP poisons, otherwise you don't really have a reason to use them. Debuff stacking I suppose maybe? His BT is funny, for one he just rah, rah, rah. <laughs> it's always so good. The actual effect is the most abusable thing ever. After any turn, it doesn't matter what happens, C65, call, enemy turn, party turn, after anything you do, any button you press or any action that is taken, uh, it's a AoE HP poison for the enemies. Uh, based on X-Death's attack, and it also batteries the party based on X-Death's attack. So it's actually very smart to buff X-Death with attack. Like, I think Aerith and Waka are calls that really super steroid attack. And if you do this, like, the off-turn damage is crazy to the point where you want to slow X-Death down. Some people with X-Death friends, they take off their speed passive, so the X-Death friend acts less. And it's not like Cloud of Darkness where um, it can steal the turns. Like, X-Death effect, like if you're going a turn stealer, like I know people on his uh, actual fight, they cook the boss to death with Ignis, because you see synergy, and I'll go over that in a second, but they just sat there and spam turns with Ignis, and the boss just kind of died, and you didn't have to do anything. It's very, very abusable, very funny, and it persists pretty much infinitely. It's crazy. <laughs> X-Death has no known reruns at this point. We don't know what his BT plus and 90 is going to be like, so if you want X death and his BT, this is the time to grab him. As for my analysis on X death, he's really just the same off turn damage character. Most of his damage is coming from off turn damage and poison ticks, and people don't realize that they focus way too much, in my opinion, on his on turn damage. And so, and there's also this notion that he dies at Lufenia Plus that I think is wrong, and this is easily going to get proven wrong with like people who are dedicated to running X death. Well, one, it's it's fine to bump his brave gains up via like Porum and Agrius, so his on turn damage is better. Or you could just buff his attack and make his poisons hit even harder. And people, like we're seeing this with Core right now, where people don't see how much damage is actually happening in the off turn because it's not exactly advertised well, but X Death's main source of damage has always been his damage over time on his HP poisons. And as long as you buff his attack up, he's good. He goes anywhere, he goes really well alongside turn stealers with his effect, cause, especially because they're getting batteried after uh, their actions go. So, like, setting up an X Death friend. Uh, or X Death in the party, like I know V Power on um, on Transcendence Eight just now. He he brought X Death BT to the final fight, and he just had his Papa Lima with LD just spam all the turns, and he took a, like 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 half of the boss's health just by abusing X Death BT effect. So the effect is fine, and it scales really well. So it, it's just because it gets hit with reductions doesn't mean you can't just buff it up and make it stay relevant. Weaknesses, although I did say while he can account for those things, it is a weakness that yes, he does get hit by brave gain reduction to where his on-turn damage doesn't become stellar, but his, uh, like I said, his poison ticks don't get reduced by these things. Um, so you can't always expect him to be doing that much on-turn damage. And it doesn't quite work with everything, especially because it's consistent damage over time. If you're trying to pump out the turns, you're trying to get something done fast, fight against the orb, Xeth may not always be the best choice Useful fights going forward, not much comes to mind. I know Ia's, when she got her LD, there was an HP Poison Orb that X-Death could do. You could also accomplish this by just using his Call, actually, so it wasn't even necessary there, but he could be in party and it'd be fine. Otherwise, um, he's, again, just a really flexible unit. It just is up to the user to maximize his potential, and I understand that that might not be for everyone, but he is powerful in his own right. 
Kieran's up next. He's getting LD boards only, no rework. Kieran's LD attack is a lot better now, and it also extends his buffs, so he has better longevity. He gets buffs to bring himself up to par, and the big ones are he gets party brave damage up 30 and party HP damage up 20, so he's settling back in as another great aura bot. He also gets a new HP plus from this. It's a double HP attack with refund in the middle, so now this his new HP plus is his highest damage move. He's back to being the aura bot that has a sizable amount of damage. The battery from his HP plus is also tripled. Hopefully the Rude has better auras meme can die in a burning fire now. His hammer plus is brave in HP split. Makes sense. Uh, he's got brave in HP damage modifier, so the parties you can help hit those caps. And he's got the support base, which means higher HP caps overall. And for his calls, we already have his base calls, just damage. And his LD calls and anything really special either. It's just a very minor stat boost. You won't use this. As I'm recording this, there's no known rerun for Kieran, but there's a rumor that he's getting a burst soon, so stay tuned for that. Kieran still plays the same overall. He's there to support the party, gives regen, I brave up being huge, best friends of Warrior Light as usual and now he's helping warrior lights damage out as well with the hp damage up and the brave damage up so warrior light kieran third it was already nuclear and i just proved this on what was it queen's lufenia a couple weeks ago and now um they're back at it again otherwise he's just an aura bot that sits there he's not amazing by any stretch but he's still solid overall um obviously his ex still really sucks and you never want to press it and his hp plus being his best move kind of makes his kit kind of clunky but overall he can still do the job there's nothing he'd really shine in per se but he's a just a straight up aura bot with decent damage so he can fit pretty much anywhere so while he doesn't shine per se he does pretty much work everywhere next we have lion who nobody really knows anything about i always forget she's in the game but she got she got actually really good upgrades her ld hits really hard and it gives her a new buff called bully the sizable amount of attack from this buff and her limit breaks on her LD, but the big stuff you really care about is critical brave damage up 50% and HP damage up 20%. Additionally, now Lion's whole uh, setup and do the, the non-hide attack and then get the special version afterwards, you just completely ignore that now. She's always just running at full steam with her special attacks. She also gets a nice follow-up from her LD. This follow-up is a double HP attack with splash and it dispels a buff from the enemy and leaves her a brave afterwards, so it leaves her incredibly safe. Just make sure you're targeting someone who isn't targeting Lion or else it won't hit that hard. If you didn't know, Lion has like, a, I think it's an 80% weakness damage up modifier when she's attacking people that are not targeting her. So it's always best to run with tanks. She also gets a special Brave Plus from her LD. It also makes it so she can jump behind an ally, Kais or Lael style. This is all right if she needs to make sure that they take a turn so she can trigger the condition on her EX. It kind of fixes a hole in her kit. And what's even better is that it'll, it will always follow up. It's kind of like Noel, where if he breaks with his Brave Plus, it'll trigger his LD follow up. Same thing happens with here. Lion will Brave Plus and then follow up afterwards. So this turn is not wasted. Her call is low-key kind of good, but I, I don't see why you'd use it, but it's crit brave damage up and HP damage up 10%, which would actually actually be pretty good for a burst phase, actually, now that I think about it. Overall, Lion is a pretty solid damage dealer now. She's got a bunch of offensive buffs that she can definitely keep up now. She's always been a sleeper just because she's not very popular, and I understand why. She's kind of goofy. She's got a really big forehead. Like, <laughs> her forehead's enormous. I can't get over that. Like, it's like half of her... Half of her face, it's kind of weird. Any, anyway, <laughs> I know Alpha Noah on YouTube used her a ton, so he's probably a better, a more authoritative source on her, but she she definitely got some good stuff. She's probably just gonna be overlooked because lack of interest in the character, which is fine. I mean, the people who, the, the three people who love FL, FF11, I should say, uh, they're, they're gonna enjoy her more than likely. She's a better dispeller now. I actually had no clue that her follow-up dispelled. That's pretty good, but this, when dispel's needed, it's good, but we don't always need it, etc., etc. Lion's always been a, Sneaky, uh, I guess that was that was an unintentional pun. She's been she's been sneakily very powerful, just not on anyone's radar. And she's pretty easy to slot in a team as a main damage dealer. I know I know Alpha No used her. I think it was in a garden that's intertwined well and some other thing. I don't know off the top of my head, but her her data is definitely out there, and she could definitely hold her own. Oh, and she's got the attacker high armor plus with the three one split for brave hits. It makes sense because she's got a million brave hits. Lion has a known LD rerun on Snow's intertwined will when he gets his LD and rework. Ignis also gets his LD rerun here and he gets timer plus and then his next rerun is when he gets level 90 alongside, what was it, uh, Tidus. The orb is HP damage from a debuff, which is literally just X death plus 10. There's also a secondary orb that people don't know about, but you can, if you do two debuffs on one turn, it's plus run. So this means people who, if you run a team of full debuffers and then don't let the boss get many turns, like for Terra, for example, I know of one team with like Terra, Young, and a Cloud of Darkness friend, because Terra debuffs on every, on both of her skills, AoE, they were able to do this fight. Uh, but X Death friend, X Death calls are also viable here. It's very possible to just get around this orb. It's not as restrictive as it looks. 
it is the X death boss, so don't break them when they go into a mode or else you're gonna get countered and that's not a good time. I think Warrior Light chooses this again. I think in JP I ran, what was it, Yuna, X death, and uh, Warrior of Light and just kind of sat there and laughed at the boss. But X death chooses it, but it's definitely possible without him in the party. I think they buff themselves at points, so that's probably why Lion would be decent here and she's single target, so I only think one of them goes into the counter mode at once so she can focus just on one and it ends up working well and her skills debuff as well. My plans for the event overall, I already have eight, this is LD, I already have Kieran's LD, and I already have x Death's LD, and I have no interest in using Lion. I, she's definitely very powerful, uh, but I, I'm just not going to use her. I have DPS that I already use, so I mean, I don't need her. If I wanted to use her, I would, she'd be fine, but I'm not going to do it. So uh, more power to the people who are going to do it, she'll do fine. Um, no need to touch this banner because I have everything I need. I'm not going to chase the burst. I had x Death burst in JP. And um, while I did like using him initially in Synergy, Lufania Plus came right afterwards. And while I could have used him there, I just wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't for me. There were more units I wanted to prioritize. But again, there will be people who run X Death in those fights and prove any people doubting him wrong. So don't, don't be on the wrong side of that because it, it just never works. As for the fight itself, I'm probably going to bring Warrior Light, X Death, and Kirin, just because I don't think I even used Kirin after I got his LD boards and JP, so I want to at least try that because I think it'd be fun, but we'll see. And that's it. Hope you all enjoyed the clip and found it informative. I do try my best, generally. If you haven't already done so, please like the video, comment what you think and your plans, and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more great content. The full video is linked, so check that out as well. Continue showing love. Good luck, everybody. Peace.